Here's everything you need to know about RAID in 4 minutes. RAID is an acronym for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks or as they call it now, independent disks. So if you see it word by word, it means redundant as in a backup or a fallback plan. Array means a group or a collection, independent as in separate, and disks as in storage disks like hard drives or SSDs. To understand this better, let's take this example. We are in 1955 and your family has stumbled upon this family recipe book consisting of all these secret recipes from your great grandmother and it's disintegrating really, really fast. So what do you do? You sit down and copy each page one by one. Yeah, you can take a picture, but we are in 1955, remember? Copying down everything page by page is good, but really slow. So you ask your sibling to join in and copy down alternate pages in his notebook. Now, the two of you can copy down this big book in half the time you would have needed by yourself. But there's a big caveat. You need both your copies for the recipe book to make sense, since you each copied alternate pages. This is how RAID 0 works. The data being written is across two or more disks, so you're no longer limited by the disk read or write speeds. So if your SSD writes at 450 Mbps, it won't exactly double with two SSDs, but it would be much higher than 450 Mbps. More the number of drives in an RAID 0 array, the speedier it is, but there's a big downside. If any one of the disk fails, you lose all your data. With an heirloom like the secret family recipe book, you need more security or redundancy. So rather than having your sibling copy alternate pages, you have him copy the same page. So now, although slow, you would have two copies of the same data. So if either of you lose your copy, there's always another one. This is what RAID 1 is. Data is mirrored across two disks. So you have one more copy in case one disk fails. The caveat in this case is since you're mirroring the same data across two disks, you get the actual capacity of just one disk. So the other disk is just a mirror. Plus, you're limited to read and write speeds of the slowest disk. So can't you have the speed of RAID 0 and the redundancy of RAID 1? Of course. This is achieved with a concept called parity. So as we know, computers understand binary language. So every letter, word, and sentence can be represented by numbers. For example, this sentence becomes this in binary. So if you add up all the ones in the above binary output row by row, row 1 gives you 28, row 2 gives you 31, Row 3 gives you 28, row 4 gives you 29. Even numbers are represented by 0, odd numbers by 1. So row 1 will become 0, row 2 will become 1, row 3 will become 0, and row 4 will be 1 again. We do the same for all columns. So again, odd numbers become 1 and even numbers become 0. These numbers for rows and columns are called check digits. It is very basic understanding of the concept of parity. So if any of these binary numbers are flipped, corrupted, or deleted due to an error, check digits will not match and then the computer can either fix or even rebuild data. Now that we have understood how parity works, we can proceed to understanding RAID 4, 5 and 6. RAID 2 and 3 is super redundant, so we won't be talking about it. RAID 4 needs at least 3 drives with 1 being the parity drive. The space you get is equal to the size of the smallest drive times the number of drives minus the parity drive. So in most cases, all drives are the same size. RAID 4 uses one drive just to store the parity bits for data. So if you have four drives, one terabyte each in a RAID 4 array, you get the usable space of three terabytes plus the performance boost of having three drives in RAID 0. Plus, you can afford for one drive to fail as long as it's not the parity drive. So here, you get the performance benefits of RAID 0 with some redundancy, but not enough. RAID 5 is similar to RAID 4, except the parity bits are spread across all drives equally. So you can have one of any installed disks fail and your data will still be safe. Better than RAID 4, but it's still not enough. So we have RAID 6. RAID 6 is similar to RAID 5, but each drive has two parity bits instead of one, spread equally across all drives. In simple words, you can have any two drives in an array fail and still have your data be safe. There are more complex RAID systems like RAID 50, which is basically RAID 5 plus 0, which means there are multiple RAID 5 arrays linked together in RAID 0, or RAID 60, which is RAID 6 plus 0, meaning multiple RAID 6 arrays together in RAID 0. I hope this video gave you some clarity on what RAID is and how it works, because in the next video, we are going to use this concept to build an ultra-fast network access storage, which is faster than writing to your local disk. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when I do that. Thank you for watching.